Hey, good day beautiful people and we continue today and we say God is good and I stood up and woke up this morning with a song in my heart something like I hear the voice of the Father and we talk about how God talks to us how we pray, how we intercede, how we do and manifest what needs to be done in his will and his way and like I said I have the song in my head this today it says I hear the voice of the Father so what does it mean to hear God's voice so hearing the voice of God in John 10 verse 27 for example Jesus says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me. And every single believer knows the voice of God. It's just whether or not they're actually attributed to God. For most of my life, for example, I've heard, I really heard the voice of God clearly. But it wasn't until a few years ago, actually, that I knew it was Him. And once I had the understanding Everything shifted and it provides you with a new level of confidence in your decisions, even if they may not make sense in the eyes of society. We talked about that, the way of the prophet, the weird things that we do sometimes, not in the eyes of society. So God wants a relationship with you and he wants a relationship with me as well. But relationships aren't just on Sundays. He wants a relationship all the time. And I heard this great example um, a while ago about how relationships work. You begin as an acquaintance with someone, then you become their friend, then you become best friends. And it's the same with God. So right when you get saved, you're in that acquaintance category. Okay, I believe in you, God. I give my life to you. I know a little about you. But I'm willing and ready to learn more. And then you hit the friend level. You're spending more time with him. You're getting to know him and his heart. You're building a connection. And then finally you hit that true intimacy with the Lord. That best friend level. And you understand his emotions. You know what he is feeling in situations. And you know how he would respond to the situations around you. That best friend intimate level is what we grew, what we were, what I believe what we were created for. It's how we bring heaven to earth in all that we do. So how do you get there? Well, you spend time with him, spend time in the word, knowing the Bible is crucial, spend time in worship, spend time in prayer, and spend time in silence, a moment of silence, complete silence to listen and expecting for him to speak. And then you listen. Half of communication is listening. So, in the Old Testament, for example, God spoke spoke audibly a lot of the time. And he still can today, obviously. But things are a little bit different than the Old Testament ways. And now we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And he's constantly wanting to be in communication with us. So in the Bible, there are two Greek words um, for the word word. The first is logos, which is the inspired word of God and also a name of Jesus, who is the living word. Then this other second Greek word we see in scripture is rhema. 
and the Rema word of God. This is more of a kind of whisper from the Holy Spirit on what we are supposed to do and how scripture relates to the here and the now. It's God speaking in the moment. So sometimes you may receive a Rema word from God that directs you to a certain passage of scripture that applies to your current situation. So the way that God speaks is different for everyone. We understand that. But a lot of the times it is still a small whisper. It's a gut feeling. And you just know. For some people it's a thought that just rushes in and it's nowhere close to what you had been thinking about. Sometimes it's a dream. Sometimes it's a picture. Like a vision. Picture. That you see either with your eyes open or your eyes closed. The way that you pray. Sometimes it's a sense of peace and joy that covers you, your body in a moment of chaos. And sometimes it's wisdom in a situation. And sometimes God speaks to you for your, for what you're going through. Sometimes he speaks to you for someone else, intercession. And sometimes he just shares things that he wants you to pray about. And we need to understand that, watchman on the tower. And one thing I will say is that when sharing with others about what God has shared with you, a great way to phrase it is something like I feel like God told me I know that God told me or I'm sensing that God is saying this, that, whatever because if you make claims that God said something and you're wrong well that could mess up someone else's relationship with God and that is why I say it's so important to make this discernment when you pray and when you intercede and you don't want to be accountable for that of course at the end of the day what all of it boils down to is that is that he just wants to be in communication with you the way that he originally intended for it to be it's not a weird thing it's literally what you were created for to have that relationship with God, the Creator, your Father. I hear the Father's voice. So spend time with Him. Spend time in the Word, in prayer. Spend time in silence and listen because He wants to speak. And then you say, Lord, speak. I listen. I hear the voice of the Father. And how I hear the Father speak. I've, I've had different people tell me recently in my life, in my time, I can't hear God the way you hear God. Well, I know I am the Father's chosen. I know Him. I know all of His children are His favorite. So to hear Him speak is something that we should all expect. Expect it. And Let's start with the basics in this case. First, the Father spoke, and the visible and the invisible came into being. And when he sent his Son, a title he accepted was the Word. Yes, there are seasons when the test is on and the teacher is silent. But the normal experience for a follower of Christ is to hear the Father's voice and you see if you're on a for example if you are on a wireless network as you read listen your wireless and those network waves are passing through you with a little or no effect and the only way you and you your cell phone your laptop the way that you listen and read things up can connect to the internet is because you found an open network or put in the proper password 
to overcome the encryption. And you need the laptop, for example, or your cell phone or something to pick up the network. And you need that software to be properly configured. And the father is almost always speaking to you as his child. You are the laptop, for example. You are the cell phone. And all you need to know is how to properly configure the software. And it is important that this software, bear with me with this one, is properly configured. Because you need to hear the voice of the Father. And His voice protects you from all kinds of mistakes. And I make a lot of mistakes. I am so all over. And Job 33, verse 70 to 18 reads, In a dream, for instance, a vision at night, when men and women are deep in sleep, fast asleep in their beds. I don't sleep well, but I imagine that. God opens their ears and impresses them with warnings. We talked about warnings in the previous videos. And to turn them back from something bad they are planning from some reckless choice and keep them from an early grave from the river of no return. Job 33, verse 17 to 18. And his voice is the secret of a full life. In John 15, verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. John 15 verse 5. So understand, you can hear his voice because Jesus said, John 10 verse 15, uh, 14 to 16, I am the good shepherd and I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me in the same way. The father knows me and I know the father. And I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in the Spain. And I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also, they will also recognize my voice. The word of Jesus Christ, according to the Message Bible. John 10 verse 14 to 16. So how can you hear his voice if you're not hearing him now? And how can you properly configure that software God planted into you? Well, let's think about this. Let's pray about this. We're going to switch metaphors to metaphors now to something more biblical. Because Jesus addresses how we prepare our hearts in a parable, which is recorded in Luke 8, verse 4 to 15. And the parable is, I'm going to read that. As they went from town to town, a lot of people joined in and traveled along. And he addressed them using the story. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Some of it fell on the road. It was trampled, trampled down on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell in the gravel. It sprouted, but with it, because it didn't have good roots. Other seed fell in the weeds, and the weeds grew with it and strangled it. And other seed fell in rich earth and produced a bumper crop. Are you listening to this? Are you really listening? His disciples asked, oh, Why, Lord, did you tell the story? And he said, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. And there are others who need these stories. But even with stories, some of them aren't going to get it. Their eyes are open, but don't see a thing. And their ears are open, but they don't hear a thing. Verse 11 to 12. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God, and the seed on the road are those who hear the word. But no sooner do they hear it than the devil snatches it, snatches, snatches it 
from them so they won't believe it to be saved I want you to go read that and understand it and again we say Father I want to hear your voice speak and we listen in Jesus name Amen